Hey everyone, and welcome back to the first semifinal round of today's Path to 145K tournament. We're underway here with Team Q versus C9. Let's cover who's playing what and where they're going for what team. Team Q, the blue team, the bottom side of your map on the pristine side, defending the Titan of Order. We have Poeng on Geb in the support role. Proxy Q, Q taking Freya into the jungle. And Q on Sun Kong in the solo lane. Real Z on on her. And Captain Twig on Jung Kui. On the top side of your map, this is going to be the red team. On the destroyed side, first seed, Cloud9 HyperX. Captain Sayo playing Octi go to the mid lane. Sun Touch and Smek going to be teaming up for the duo lane. Playing Sobek and Artemis, respectively. Zalia going to be hovering in the impenetrable solo lane as Ra. And Frostiak finally getting a chance to play one of his favorite characters, Bastet, going into the jungle. You know, 100% win, win rate for Frostiak on Bastet. And even last week, we saw Frostiak play Arachne in the grand final. So we know Frostiak is a talented jungler. And I think Bastet gets a lot of uh, focus in the European scene, not so much at all uh, in NA. Uh, we're not seeing them even prefer to pick up that character, even when the top uh, junglers are banned out. So we know Frost is incredibly strong. Uh, we're not going to see the Vamana or Smex Neath, but Smex will pick up the Artemis here. Zalia, of course, going to get raw in that long uh, long solo lane over there. Sayo going in the mid lane with Agni. No Isis preference this time. So, you know, C9 has a big God point, and there's no doubt that uh, that uh, yes. there is a preference towards C9 in the chat. We saw the voting system; uh, it was 88% yes. to 12 last time I saw. But right side, that's what yes. you gotta do. Invade every game. First blood, right there, gonna go to Team Q. Not to mention they were able to steal away that speed buff. You guys at home know my favorite start in the game currently. Take away the jungle, shut down the jungler, get it done as fast as possible. Proxy, he's gonna be in a very good spot here, whereas Frostiak could be in a lot of trouble as he has lost his red pot. Team Q has done their homework. Frostiak is a huge component for C9's early game, and not only are they going to get first blood, not only are they going to get dominance in the solo lane, as well as a good amount of farm there for Proxy, they're going to get the pot. And so now we're going to see Frostiak in the jungle across the way just, just doing harpies right now. He doesn't have his pot. He doesn't have any preference. And that's going to buy them a lot of early game time to be very safe, farm up, and look for kills with the worry that there's going to be cats coming around the corner. I mean... There's not going to be a worry for that for a very long time. Still level 1, Frostiak using Hand of the Gods here on the left side to try to clear away the red buff. He's going to take a long time on this. Bumbus should heal him back up a little bit, and he has a few health potions available to him. But look at the damage coming out. He's already getting nervous. He'll be able to clean it up here. But, all oh, the damage is done just now hitting level 2. Whereas we check in the fro or on the bottom side, Proxy has already hit level 4. It's, this game right now is on Proxy's shoulders. Team Q needs him to hit 5, begin the rotations. Pick off the Ra, pick off the Agni, get over to the duo lane, coordinate with Poeng and Real ZX, and find a kill. If Team Q wants to win this game over what seems to be almost an impenetrable Cloud9, they need to get it done in the early game. I love the, the change in pace, the change in mindset. You can feel it today, how aggressive and how focused Team Q is right now, trying to shut down uh, C9 in an early stage of the semifinal. So they're looking for it, and they have a good lead. I mean, they're 1-0, 700 gold up, 700 experience up. But you're exactly right. You can't take that early lead uh, too heavily uh, and just take it to heart. And the fact that you, you have this start kind of just slow down your pace. You have to get out there. You have to steal some more buffs. You have to put them in pressure. And honestly, that's the difference between you know the highest team Team, um, and the team that uh, you know doesn't always make it to the finals is whether or not they're able to capitalize and put, I guess, pressure on the wound when it gets opened up. I mean, they got to keep shutting down Frostiak and make sure he doesn't get caught back up. Did you see this? Proxy QQ has opted to give away the speed buff to the support. It's currently on Geb, and on the bottom side, you see him now picking a red buff, likely for himself, but with the low mana right now, I don't know if he's looking for a gank. No, he's gonna go back here. Mid lane, uh, Captain Schwig Jonkwe is fighting up against Sayo here. Both have hit level 5, so gank potential is available. Actually, both have now procced into level 6. Uh, left side, Smek hitting level 5, getting that uh, ultimate available to them. Same thing uh, for Reels DX, trying to keep them off the tower here. Poeng is gonna lose, it looks like, two sets of gold here, but not enough to deter. He's able to keep that safe without losing too much health. Overall, Cloud9 still slightly behind here as Team Q still 1-0, has about an 800 gold lead. 
I love the start from Team Q, and I love the fact that they're coming out strong today. And, uh, you know, you're going to see Frosty at completely undeterred. going to go directly into that Heart Seeker and start stacking that up, as he always does, and most likely into Boots, and probably Jotun's Wrath after that, as he is known to do. Uh, you know, left side, we're going to see two sprints come out early. I like this. Uh, sprint is a very, very strong counter to Bastet, especially with those cats. It honestly shuts down the Bastet ultimate completely as you're immune to uh, slows from the cats as well as the Ninetales while it is active and gets you uh, the opportunity to reposition yourself. And not only did they get the early start, they shut down the red pot. They're picking up counters to slow down Bastet even more. And we know that this is how C9 plays. Frosty X starts the game strong, gets some good gains, gets some good harassment. Smack goes into the gold mines and starts collecting his carts and trying to go for an initiation. Right side, Zalia force out of position here going downward towards the enemy side of the map so no kong chasing down there's the jingle bang Freya, perfect positioning for the zone so busting on the ground zalia in a lot of trouble here this could be second blood for team q give it up zalia is gonna go down to the harassment and team q is now 2-0 against cloud nine god and the patience there coming out from proxy i would have ulted like seven times by that point jesus Top side, best at, I think he recognizes the fact that they just killed him at the four minute mark and are now going to steal away every point of contention that they can. The card has been thrown down. There's the exposed evil helping out with the, uh, actually going to feed him some experience as well. Speed buff is on the ground going into the blue buff. Now, Bastet's going to be able to see this one. I think they're going to hide it out. I think they're going to look for the kill here, but Bastet recognizes the threat. They're going to run back over to lane. Two to zero right now, stealing away more points of contention. Team Q really can't coming out of the gate here. Oh, absolutely. The solo lane is doing quite well. MQ at 3,800, 3,900 gold now across. Zalia's at 3,100. It's very rare for us to see Zalia 700, 800 gold behind in the solo lane starting out, especially when he gets a character like Ra, which he's very comfortable with. So Team Q kicking it up a notch. And honestly, I think this just comes down to the fact that C9 just didn't give enough respect to Team Q when they came into this match. They're thinking this is going to be an easy win. We got this. I mean, we've made it to the finals every single week. We are okay. Don't worry about it. All of a Team Q says, bang, first blood on your jungler, we take your pot away, we go to the soloing, we slow down Zalia, we know how important Zalia is to the mid-game rotation once those team fights start up. I mean, that transition from Zalia and from the solo lane into the fights is so, so uh, crucial for their fight, and then all, not only are they going to pick off the jungler and slow down Frostiag, they're going to go for uh, for Zalia here, and Smek still able to farm ahead of Reels in the left side, but, you know, Team Q seems to have uh, C9's number for the time being. I mean, Smek is ahead, but it's not by much. There's a big disparity here between second and fourth as Proxy QQ has 4,200 gold, putting him on top here. NQ, same thing, 4,200, way ahead of Zalia right now at 36. We're really seeing Team Q come together here, but they need to convert this to more kills. I mean, they have to make more successful ganks like we saw in the solo lane. It, again, it's going to fall down to Proxy. He needs to be able to rotate around faster. I want to see him pick up the speed buff this time. We know that the red buff is going to be coming up in a few seconds. He took that last time ever, after giving this away. I think he's maybe going to look for a kill on the Smek here. You see him kind of hovering towards the left side of the speed buff. But over on the left side, it looks like both uh, Geb and Anher have fallen back to the base here. The buff has been picked up, and he is rotating over towards the left side. He just lane farm, and of course, there's no one there. Reels, he had to head on home. Smack keeping the pressure up, so he doesn't want to take any damage in this tower. And, you know, they need to be careful here. Mid lane does have the sprint activation available if Bassett decides the old good sun on the Book of Demons, forcing Frostiak out. And, you know, it, it's it's so uncharacteristic to see Frostiak so passive to start out here. Level 7. In fact, he's going to be the second least farmed in the whole game, uh, just ahead of Poeng on Geb across the way. So he's trying to keep up with what he has. Um, uh, Looks yeah, he's going to be just above Sun Touch as well. So third. Uh, least farm in the game, so he's you know he's definitely much further behind than we're used to. Uh, Sayo, of course, farming very strongly in the mid lane, and that's going to be a beacon of hope for them. As of course, once Agni comes out strong with a decent amount of penetration, it can change team fights drastically. So they're going to be leaning on uh, Sayo early on as much as they can, as well as Smek, who's getting a great deal of actual farm here. Uh, if we head over to the actual numbers, looking at it, uh, yeah, there's no AC preference for Smek. He doesn't like the item, but I think it would be a good pickup for him because oh. it's a great. Great mid-game item. Speaking of mid, 
the right mid camp spawn. C9 had the advantage there. Geb was not going to be able to rotate in. No communication. Maybe on tilt a little bit. C9 forces out a double use of Hand of the Gods, which is going to really put pressure onto this blue buff here. As Poeng has rotated over, we see Proxy QQ hanging out as well. This is shaping up to be a 4v4 engagement. Inside, Frostyak has been banished out. We all oh, the Cataclysm is only going to hit one as Frostyak jumps out there. Suntouch taking some damage. Somersault Cloud has been used. There's the Lurking in the Waters. They're going to turn their side on a Frostyak who's been knocked out of the fight by the rollout. This should be a free pickup here for the blue buff. I don't know if that's exactly what either team wanted here. Both teams getting very aggressive. Multiple ultimates have been used here, uh, but really not enough to deter. Uh, team Q is going to be forced out towards the left side. Mid camp has spawned, getting picked up by Smek. I don't think we're going to have anyone rotating in time, but Smek's not in a really good position here. The knockup's going to be completely knocked out there uh, by the boar who, of course, is going to stop Reels the extra moving in. This would be a really good attempt for the, the Gold Fury. They're moving up hard. Do they want Artemis or do they want the Gold Fury? They need to decide soon. Sobek rotating over as well. We'll have the support Audi in the mid lane and the dash backwards there. They're going to go for the blue buff here. A little bit more conservative choice, making sure they don't give anything up uh, too early. And, you know, if they don't have the positioning, they're not going to go for it. They're being very uh, cautious here. John Quay is going to find side on the mid lane. Exorcism uh, was not used there, but Exposed Evil did a lot of damage, uh, forcing him to dash away. At this point, we're sitting 2-0 lead for Team Q. 720 gold uh, and 2,200 experience, actually a huge amount of control in the early stage for Team Q. Zalia right side getting low. Does he have the damage he needs? Zalia gets out of there and NQ forced to stop. That That Divine Blessing is such a nuisance if you're a melee character. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I, it, it kind of drives me nuts, honestly. It's one of my <laughs> least favorite things in the game as a strictly melee player. I'm not a real big fan of magic. Ew. Magic's scary. Searing Pain going to be used to clear the wave. That's going to be Zalia's ticket back to the base as NQ continues to push mid lane. Uh, we have another attempt. Uh, actually, Frostyak able to steal that. Will be able to jump back if needed. He is out of there. So a good play from Cloud9. Still, there's about 900 gold that separates the team. 2,400 experience. But I, I feel like Team Q is not pressing their advantage here. They had such an early game presence, and now... You know, take a look at the board here. Frostyak, level 9. Still Proxy, level 10. It's really not that big of a difference. It could have been much bigger, but it seems like Proxy is just not finding himself enough time to farm, and the ganks he's going for aren't successful. And then the mid camp's constantly going to Cloud9. It just seems like the teamwork is just a little bit stronger right now. You know, they have the right idea. They start out early, they, they, sh they slow down the farm for Frostyak, then they go for a kill on the right side, they get it on Zalia. So, you know, the respect bands are there, the positioning is right, they're looking for the right picks, and, and picking out the uh, the legs that C9 stands on with their build. But again, they have to be careful with uh, the, the, the mid and late game. We know C9 has a fantastic late game. Sayo, a character who, you know, is compared to other mids that we have in both NA and EU, he's more, one of the more passive uh, mid players. He likes to kind of hang back and get the farm uh, um, and just wait for mid and late where his damage is off the charts. Especially when he plays Isis, he just sits back and farms, 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 farms. Even if his team's losing, he just waits for his opportunity to just get big numbers uh, in the mid and late. So there is a late game potential here for C9. Team Q is looking to build up to it. Now, keep in mind, Reals, he did go for that Aussie Heartseeker build. We know Smek doesn't have a preference for that, so we'll see how he reacts to this. He may just go down his normal route and just, you know, pick up uh, possibly a Malice or maybe uh, something like, uh, I mean, he, he likes to explore experiment a lot. Blood Forge as well. He's been playing with some very interesting build styles uh, in the Hunter role uh, across the map. So, you know, Team Q needs to start grouping up and try and push pressure on the wound that they've exposed right now to the air. Otherwise, it's just going to heal right up. Frosty, I keep hitting level 10 right now. That's going to ensure uh, guarantees, rather, that the cats now will be level 2. Uh, at this point, the bleed will likely be uh, pumped up. I'm wondering if he went for nine tails or pounce. I mean, usually it, it depends on what you're fighting. Most of the time, we're going to see the pounce getting leveled for how much damage it does and for how easy it is to land. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see what his damage is going to look like in the next fight. Uh, left side, we're still seeing kind of this uh, this maybe very campy boxing match. Smek and Real, neither of whom are really ready to commit to a kill yet. Both of them kind of poking from afar. We're not even seeing a push for the volley. We don't see the impale getting used. Both players very, very cautious because one misstep in a match with two characters that have such insanely high damage can spell instant death. We might see that here left side. There goes a the shockwave, not going to land. Sun touch dashes away with that charge. Prey wards being put down. I mean, all these wards 
are sentry wards. Look at the commitment to vision here from both sides, C9. And Team Q has two of them on either side of the Gold Fury. You know, I love the fact that Team, uh, Team Q has stepped up their game and just put pressure on the individual aspects of their gameplay that spell out to a lead in the mid stage. I mean, they're getting the ward vision, they're shutting down the jungle, they're rotating over, they're being aware, they're trying to get the mid camps. And this is how a team who, you know, knows their picks, can play their characters effectively, knows about builds, uh, can start to accelerate themselves forward is look at the small stuff, the vision, the small rotations, being able to leave a buff camp if your team's fighting and you're not able to get it in time, just leave it and go for a fight. I mean, it's the small little differences that spell out for such a big, big lead in the mid stage. And Team Q is starting to build that up here. Uh, it's slowly t inkling down, but they're holding on to it outright. And C9 is waiting for a big win. Right side, Zalia under trouble. There goes the pulse. Not going to land the slow. He looks like he's going to be just fine. You know, you're seeing the shrink in the lead here. I mean, it's it's so much now more in favor in, in Cloud9 than it was. I mean, we've seen 400 gold now go back into their favor. Experience difference has been uh, maybe cut down by a, about a fifth. But you can see those little victories are going to start adding up. We need to see Team Q go for something. And finally, Poeng's going in here. Huge knockback. Check it out. Sun Touch in a horrible position. Desert Fury. Multiple shots gonna land. Nice juking coming out. Real's gonna land most of that. Disperse a little bit too early, but he has been carded. Not getting into the club. Sun Touch is gonna go down, and that's gonna be the hand of the god stripped away too. Even though he hasn't leveled it yet, this is Team Q's chance for an objective here. Poeng's inside. Real's inside. Proxy's rotating over. Captain Twig has sent the card out. The evil in Frostyak has been exposed. 1500 right there for Team Q. Well, I'm kind of for Ani looking for initiation. Captain gets shielded, and then the heavenly agility comes out. They say, you know what? We got a gold fury. No one died. Let's get out. I love this, man. I am so excited about the fact that Team Q is just making very few mistakes in the early stages of this game, and they're just showing how strong they can be when they put their heads together. And really, you know, it, it, it just gets amplified by the fact that they're facing up against C9, and C9 just can't seem to find a good spot to slow down Team Q. 2,500 gold in lead now, 4,400 experience. They're doing everything right. No towers have fallen, so this is just a raw lead for them. Mid lane, Sile forced to dash away. Frostyak level 11 right now. Frostyak is tying the gold farm almost for Geb across the way. That early assassinate on Bastet paid out in droves as it's given them enough room to breathe to start rotating and taking objectives. Right now, we're seeing a pretty decent lead. 2,200 gold, 4,000 experience. Team Q is starting to amp up a little more, and we need to see more of this. And honestly, I expect to see much more aggressive coming out, or rather, aggression coming out from Proxy. He had an early lead, he had early aggression, and now he's kind of just resigned to sitting back, farming up. Maybe this will be an opportunity here. We can see Zalia pushed up a little bit. He might go for the banish here. He's actually just going to go out in front again. It just doesn't look like he's ready to commit. Yeah, kind of hesitant there, and then really they're just looking for guaranteed leads, and they back off mid lane. There goes Nine Tails, Razor Claws, and Frostag just jumps back. He knows the sprints there, uh, the Heavenly Agility. He knows, um, actually, the Heavenly Agility wouldn't be able to uh, uh, keep him as far, but in the mid lane, he has the distance he needs to just get out of dodge and qu as quick as he possibly can. Frostag forced away by proxy in the jungle, right side mid camps. Uh, the point of contention right now for both teams. Again, a lot of sentry wards on the ground. In fact, almost every ward is a sentry ward on the map. Uh, a higher majority than uh, not, so a uh, great place in there. Sometimes looking like he wants to try and counter something. Uh, I3 is available for both teams, and look at this. Tier 3 Hand of the Gods on Team Q. C9 has yet to pick it up. They know the gold 3 is down for 3 minutes, and Fire Dragon not a possibility, so they're saving their gold. Mid lane, looks like the mid camps actually did end up going to C9. And that was very aggressive. You can see Proxy, you can almost feel the rage in Proxy right there as he just started running right at them as fast as he could, looking for an opportunity to get that banish. But Sayo, Sayo knows what he's doing. He just turned tail, path of flames right out of there. Doesn't want to drop that one. But yeah, C9's going to earn themselves a little bit of gold and a little bit of experience as well in that regard. Um, now, pushing more again, left side camp we're going to see go to Team Q right there. Ogni Bomb not going to be... Uh, quite landed. He's pushing up pretty far here, but Captain Twig not getting aggressive. If there's one character you want to see get cleanly to the end game, it's going to be Jean Kuei. He becomes so tanky. There's so much damage available for Recall Demons, and there's really not much you can do to stop him, because while Recall Demons is going off, he still has Book of Demons for the stun, Exorcism for major amounts of burst damage, and one of the most annoying slows in the game with Expose Evil. 
Yeah, it, it lasts so, so very long. It's incredibly difficult to deal with John Quay, although John Quay is kind of the, uh, I guess it would be the, 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 the dump load truck where he just gets rid of all his cooldowns, uh, unloads what he has in the back, and then all of a sudden he's just sitting on something that's a little bit less effective. You know, it's, it's something that he has to deal with um, as much as he possibly can. Um, of course, the duration there on the, uh, the exposed evil, five seconds is a long time to be slowed, especially if it's a, a, the gem of isolation finished off. Left side, we're going to see a lot of aggressive items picked up. Looks like Proxy's going to skip out on that demonic rip and go directly for that Polynomicon, which honestly is going to benefit him. The difference there if you rush the point on kind of earlier on Freya, you're looking to get picks more than have sustained damage. So right now, Smek has the damage to go back and finish Aussie, but with the passive attack speed that's given to her uh, from Vengeful Assault, I don't know if he'll opt for it, but he has gone back. He actually, he tried to go back. He gets banished. Reels the X is chasing him down. Where's the Desert Fury? It's going to be activated to counter the board, and he finds the kill up into the air. We're going to see Proxy doing some damage as well, but Frosty Yak is coming for blood. The cats are out. Two onto Reels the X, one onto Proxy. They're getting chased down here. I don't know if they're going to have the damage to turn around, but Frosty Rostiak is going to be turned onto his heels as Poen gets in there and finds that stone shield. The disperse went into the wrong direction. The banish was missed. The nine tails is applied. The beads, the blade's going to be good. Pounce is going to get the kill here. That's guaranteed out, and he's so quick thanks to the passive movement speed given to him by Pounce. What a play coming out from Frostiak. Kind of dropping the kill, then picking it back up and getting out of there safely. Great, great play by Bastet. He's going to go ahead and die to this tower here. This actually should be tower credit as the time limit has been reached. Indeed, it is Olympian Tower gets credit for that. So not only does Frostiak jump in, start the team fight off right for his team, but also is able to get a kill on Proxy. It's going to be the only kill of that match. Smek, of course, can burst it down by on her ultimate. So, you know, what looked like a bad engagement for C9 gets slightly turned around in their favor uh, as uh, Frostiak gets some kind of gain there. But at the same time, it was a 2 for one trade in favor of Team Q. The mid tower goes down. The gold fear is being Taken. Team Q is looking to accelerate that lead. Look at the difference. It shot down in favor of C9, getting under that 1k difference, uh, 2k difference there. And now because they get Gold Fury, they get the mid tower. Oh. NQ gets grabbed up there. Sickening Strike pops his ultimate. Searing Pain going to come out and not going to give pain to anybody. Junkway in trouble backing off. Looks like Sun Kong's decoy will be handily dealt with. But at this point, Team Q is up 4,300 gold, 6,900 experience. They are proving today that C9 is is not untouchable. That's true. You know, we did see a great uh, push there coming out from Zalia in the right lane. Uh, Captain Twig here, not in a great spot. He does have recall demons available to him, and he starts it. The bag has been opened. He's rushing forward. Book of Demons activated. Exorcism doing some damage. Smack getting chased down by the Desert Fury. Nice dodges, but Zalia has already been picked up. Valkyrie's discretion has chosen to destroy the Artemis. Smack's out of the picture. Zalia gets picked up in the front line, trading for Captain Twig, and now Frostiak trying to find something, but the only thing he's finding is juke attempts as he's trying to get out of here again. The movement speed passive again given to him right there from Pounce. I don't know if it's going to be enough. Taleb's going to be good, but Jingu bang, he goes down. That 25% increase for movement speed allows Bassett to get out of the distance there, but my god, what a wonderful team fight for Team Q. Now, John Quay, played by Captain Twig, starts that off right by initiating with the ultimate and kind of putting C9 in, in a troubled situation. They want to commit, but they don't have as much damage as they normally would have. And I think C9 has kind of put a, a, a back by this and the fact that they're expecting to be stronger at this point in the game, and they just certainly aren't. I mean, you look at the gold difference, 4K in favor of Team Q. The experience is vastly in favor of Team Q, uh, almost on the 9,000 portion. Firejet has been started here by Team Q. A little bit greedy. Audi dumping the, dumping the bombs. Has no ultimates available. Sobek looking for a Proxy dropping low. Audi might need a Flame Wave to get it. Proxy's going to go down here. There's the Flame Wave. Dashing in. Sire looking for the steal. Hand the Gods is available. There goes that Team Q. Gets the Fire Giant. But at what cost? Freya goes down. NQ looking for the ultimate. Going to possibly go in on Agni here. He's healing up. Disengages there. So they're going to trade Freya for the Fire Giant. Given the fact that they're already ahead, what a wonderful grab. You know Dry Bear there. Screaming worth. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The jungler goes down. Oh, you know, maybe she wanted that extra fire damage. Uh, but honestly, with the way they played out, I, I don't think they're even second guessing that one. Sayo almost earning two kills, but that's the power of Gab. That's Stone Shield, man. Incredible move. It, it's scary. It is absolutely scary, and you know, I think it's a mechanic that is new and people are still getting used to. And as Gebs start to 
uh, adjust to the fact that they have to pay attention. They have to be scanning the field and see who could be uh, benefiting from the shield the most. I mean, the, the inclination there is to kind of use the shield on yourself when you're being attacked or, you know, you look for someone who's initiating, just put the shield on them. But those clutch shields make such a big difference. In fact, in, in most of the fights so far, we've seen, uh, you know, a very subtle difference with Geb putting the shield on uh, someone you like, yeah. Frost, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, on... Uh, uh, proxy in the jungle, uh, looking for opportunity. Here comes Cataclysm on the left side. The boar is out. CC Mini will prevent the boar from stunning. Desert Free comes out. Jingle Bang under the tower. Smack trying to make something happen, but Real Z is not going to let anything come of it. The left side tower's under pressure. It's going to go down. Team Q is in a significant lead. 5,200 gold, 9,300 experience. They're going for tier 2. C9 has been absolutely put on the back foot today. Yeah, well, check that out. Two towers right there taken like it was nothing, and now they don't have that Artemis Boar. They don't have the volley. They don't have the burst damage. All they're doing at this point is relying on Frosty Act to get in there. Heavenly Agility's popped. Proxy going for the boxing match here. Unafraid left Phoenix goodbye. That Phoenix goes down, the towers are down, the gold lead is vastly in the favor of Team Q, 7,500 gold. Will we have an upset this week? Ladies and gentlemen, the votes came out before this game started, and it was 88% favored for C9. Everyone watching today, almost 90% expected C9 to win this match, and Team Q says, that's funny. We've been practicing, we've been studying, we've been preparing, we've been scrimming, and look at what we've done. Mom, check me out today. 8-3, to three, 9,000 gold in the lead. The right side tower, the, actually the right lane is the only lane that has towers left. Frostyak jumping in. There goes the pounce, returning back immediately. They're still in a good position. The fire giant buff is going to be active for another minute and a half. And I don't know how C9 is going to try and play this out. You can see Suntouch looking for that pull. He wants that charge. Pretty, but he misses. The knockup's not going to be good. It's going to take off the Magi's Blessing. Cataclysm, strangely, only going to hit one there as Zio takes the damage. There's the Desert Fury, Suntouch out of the fight here, uh, dodging in. The cat is going to get stunned out by the bird, but into the backside. Zalia is going to find someone. He does take down Proxy. Poeng super low now onto Geb. Cloud9 really benefiting out of that one, but not as much as they would hope. In fact, they lose two more in the end there. Zalia, Sayo, and Smek have been taken out. They're going to be relying on a character, Bastet who doesn't really have a lot of damage to try to defend here, and I just don't see how they're going to keep that Phoenix alive. You know, it's amazing to see how quickly they push this down right side. They're going to get a three-for-one exchange, and Proxy just trading himself every single time, and that's kind of what the build is. You get the Polynomicon, you get a pick, and then you start the team fight off right, use your ultimate defensively as much as you possibly can, but they're committing so much to get a single kill, and they're ignoring Realzy, they're ignoring NQ, they're ignoring Captain Twig just to get the burst off, and, you know, Proxy recognizes that, and he builds just for the single target burst for the pick, that Polynomicon rod combo, plus the Hasten Fatalis to just glue to someone and never oh quit, God, and it gets the damage output. I mean, Deathbringer just purchased off the bat. Just Stevie says, in hand gold. I, I, I don't. It's all I don't above, know. It's, it was all above 3K. Poeng still has 3,500. He still has, like, he's about to go, what is he going to buy? An ethereal staff? Like, whatever he wants? It looks like he actually is going to opt for a level 2 Bulwark of Hope, level 2 <laughs> Breastplate of Valor. And then a whole mess of wars here. <laughs> he is just stacking as much health as possible right now. Not even worrying about the passives for the items. I am so afraid for C9 now. Last week, guys, going into the tournament, Team Solo mid, Seed 1, goes up against Torch, C4. That was the upset match. That was the upset bracket. This week, C9, who wins the tournament, goes up against Team Q. They're seed one versus seed four, and it's a repeat. If Team Q manages this, it seems like t the seed four is kind of the hot seat. And with four seconds until the Fire Giant respawns and no one from Cloud9 ready to answer with three Phoenixes down, I don't know what they can do to keep them out. You know, it's interesting to see this big of a swing here, and C9 is, is looking uh, like they just can't get a single leg up on Team Q. They're always in the right spot. The damage output is insane, and, you know, every single time Team Q needs to be in a good position to take a fight, or there's an opportunity from they're taking it, and that's what I love to see from Team Q here, and, you know, previously we've seen Team Q do, uh, you know, th currently they're 11 and 6, so their win-loss ratio uh, isn't as strong as C9, 16 and 3. C9 has lost three times 
in four weeks. And right now, Team Q is looking to make that a big four uh, losses as they're pushing down the Titan of Chaos. All three Phoenixes are down. A huge lead, 16,000 gold in favor of Team Q. They have the 5 Jive buff for three minutes and 20 seconds more. Desert Fury through the wall. They're rushing down the Titan of Chaos. Here comes the initiation. Pulling coming from the right side. Look for opportunity to initiate properly here. The shield on Captain Swig keeps him alive. Damage up from the argument. He completely avoided back two of the three bombs lost there. The Titan's dropping low. The Titan's gonna fall. Team Q takes a victory. Cloud9 is eliminated from today's grand finals. We have a big upset and Team Q has earned their spot in the finals for today. You know, that, that's a hot-blooded match, too. Proxy QQ used to be part of the C9 roster, so he actually joins up with MQ, Captain Twig, Poeing, and Reels the X and finds his voice this week. That If there's one thing to learn from this game, Dry Bear, it's that you invade every game. <laughs> Seen through the colored glasses of DM, he just sees it and he gets so excited. I mean, honestly, that's what allowed them that paved the road i mean you're ab absolutely right i mean there's credit where credit is due the merit has been shown today i mean you look at the, the the lineup for c9 and how they are able to uh you know win their games they have a strong early game that involves frost yak and, and possibly solo kills from zalia uh one versus one uh you know you're looking at smack constantly farming up and then you have Sion in the mid lane who plays safe enough and sometimes is so great at predicting where fights are going to be puts the vision down, takes the mid camps, and Team Q says, okay, we go up against possibly TSM or C9 in the semifinals. That's what we're looking at right now if we make it there. So, you know, C9, what can we do? Frostiac early game, shut it down. Get rid of that pot, put Frostiac on the back end and, and make him scramble uh, to see if he can pick